Greetings, brethren. I just purchased the um, Schofield Reference Bible, and uh, I just want to share you share with you my first thoughts about the Schofield Reference Bible. When I first got it, um, I was trying to get familiar about um, who C.I. Schofield was and get familiar with uh, the Schofield notes. And I was looking around, and there was people made charges about. Uh, one of his notes for First John 5, 7 destroys the proof text for um, the Trinity saying that it, the manuscripts omitted and um, saying that uh, Schofield was a textual critic himself and indicated they point to um, the preface in the in Schofield Reference Bible. Um, I mean, it's understandable. It is commendable to for the um, to be to labor in the scriptures. There is a place and time for it, but um, to look uh, and be critical about the scriptures to know if it's been uh, tampered with. But if you're trying to prove that uh, the King James is the preserved word. You, you probably shouldn't go to the Schofield Bible because I, I've been looking around and uh, there he does point to that the earliest and best man earliest and best manuscripts the Codex Sinaiticus and Codex Vaticanus is um, you know um, omits those verses and uh, I just wanted to read um, First, go to the um, with the preface and read you that. Okay, like um, after the eleventh. Point, I think says after mature reflection it was determined to use the authorized version none of the many revisions has commended themselves to the, pe to the people at large the revised version which has now been been before the public for 27 years gives no indication of becoming any journal since the people's Bible of the English speaking world the discovery of the Sinaitic manuscript and the labors in the field of textual criticism of such scholars as uh, Greisbach, Lachman, Tischendorf, uh, uh, Tragilies, uh, Weiner, Alfred, and Westcott, and Hort have clear. They have cleared the Greek textus receptus of minor. Uh, inaccuracies while confirming the remarkable remarkable degree in the gen general general accuracy that seems weird of the authorized version of that text such uh, immunizations of the text as for com uh, combines the dignity and the high religious value the tender associations of the past, the literary beauty, remarkable general general accuracy of the authorized version, and the results of best textual scholarship. So you got that that he was influenced, and um, with uh, like I think it was the Moody Bible Institute and things of his life, I guess. Um, by John John Darby and other things. Um, and go to the uh, second Thess uh, second Thessalonians.
In the introduction, it says in Second Thessalonians, the theme Second Thessalonians. I can't. I'm getting tongue-tied right now. Unfortunately, obscured by a mistranslation in the AV, where the day of Christ is at hand should be the day of the Lord. I I seen uh, it, it's videos about that. It's a, it's a Ruckman. Uh, Bible uh, issue that comes from Ruckman or David Hoffman, D D Ruckman and David Hoffman, common re reference Bible. Uh, apparently, it's it was um, the the um, the trend of the day in in those kind of circles um, or dispensationalist uh, circles or I don't know, but in those kind of uh, circles that like John Darby and um, C.I. Schofield and those um, late 1800s and early 1900s. Um, okay. I'll go to 1 John 5 7. So here, first, first John five seven has in the uh, the reference, the reference um, titled O. It is it is generally agreed that verse seven has no real authority and has been inserted. So you have to be careful, even though these notes. I've been I've seen you, you know people point to the Schofield notes and he's saying First John five seven is an uncertain uh, inserted verse into the text. So um, another big one is Mark sixteen nine to twelve uh, nine to twenty. And that's uh, another problem for the modern versions. Uh, um, comes from uh, his pro uh, Codex Sinaiticus causes that problem that you know it's an addition or longer ending throughout the 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 um, church history in the um, fourth fifth centuries. Um, Okay. Mm. Let me get to it. I'll read you the Schofield note for that. Actually, it's not a Schofield reference. It's actually the note that I'm looking at for um, Mark 16 verses 9 to 20. In the Schofield note, it says the passage from verse 9 to the end is not found in the two most ancient manuscripts. The sign. Cyanic and Vatican, uh, Vatican manuscript, Codex Sinaiticus, Codex Vaticanus, um, the uh, Sinaitic manuscript, and the Vatican manuscript, and the others have not have it with partial omissions. Oh, okay. Verse 9 to the end is not found in the two most ancient manuscripts. So it's uh, Codex Sinaiticus and the Vatican, the Sinaitic and Vatican, but and others have it with partial omissions and variations, but it is quoted by uh, uh, Aaron, Arrhenius, or Arrhenius, or however you pronounce that, um, Hippolytus, uh, Hi Hippolytus, in the second or third century. 
So at least it gives an indication that it was quoted, but uh, it's not found in Sianic and Vatican manuscripts. But the other references, it just says it, it, it has been omitted by our best man, best and most ancient manuscripts. Pointing back to the Codex Sinaiticus and uh, Codex Vaticanus, that's our oldest and best manuscripts. Um, okay, that's the main ones. I, I went through just the Gospels um, and wrote down. Um, Matthew sixteen twenty says the the man, manuscripts omit um met Jesus the word Jesus Matthew tw uh, seventeen twenty one best two manuscripts omit uh omit this passage this verse Matthew twenty three fourteen uh the best two manuscripts omit this verse. Matthew 25, 14, amidst kingdom of heaven. Mark 9, 9 uh, verses 29, best two manuscripts omit uh, and, and fasting, fasting and prayer, uh, and fasting. Um, Mark eleven twenty six 26, omits, uh, is omitted from the best manuscripts. Um, John, uh, chapter five, verse three, um, omits waiting for the moving water, and that's, um, that phrase, waiting for the moving water, in verse three of five, uh, John five, three, then omits whole, uh, the, all of verse 4 after John 5, 3, and 4. <coughs> okay, that's those are references. In the references, uh, there's a footnote for John uh, 7, verses 5. 53 to John 8 1 th through um, 1 th verses 1 through 11 excuse me <clears throat> there's a footnote for John 7 verses uh, John 7 53 through John 8 uh, chapter 8 verses 1 to 11 it's not fun found in some manuscripts, but Augustine declared the, the, the copyist uh, stricken from the um, from the, their copies because they feared that it teaches immorality. That's what it says. Uh, Augustine says the copyist stricken it from the copy, their co some of the copies, because they feared it teaches them immorality, and that's what the, that footnote says. And um, yeah, I just looked. I I probably didn't look at all the footnotes for the Gospels. That's I only went through the Gospels so far, and uh, I first went through the the references, look see if, if it had any om says that it had any omissions while glancing at the footnotes so so that's why I found out that I mean it for uh, biblical scholarship you to know that our uh, manuscripts are actually uh, preserved I mean it's a good thing but um, when you put it in the Bible and say well this may not belong, and this one won't, may not belong. It's just like the modern versions do. Unless they tell you that, well, these manuscripts don't have it, but 
um, have some kind of in indication that it belongs. Um, so it's misleading. And um, he praises textual criticism, Tischendorf, and other things. So, I mean, there's other doctrines that people say. I mean, not just this. Um, I guess dispensationalism that the, he teaches is all right. But there's other things that you have to be careful, I'm guessing, in his foot, footnotes. Definitely about um, the omissions that he says, well, this this is omitted from the text. So you got to be care even careful of the Schofield notes that I always heard that um, it's a good reference Bible, I mean, to learn from. I mean, I'm not sure about the other doctrines, um, but at least don't believe that um, the, well, they are omitted in the ancient text, but they do belong. So just remember that they do belong. It is true they they are missing from the Code of Sinaiticism Vaticanus, but there's reasons why it's missing. It's either a corrupt ancient document that um, um, people handled it and kind of omitted everything that has to do with Christ and everything like that by a group of people or it's a sort of modern forgery but uh, it's a corrupt text, corrupt ancient text that omitted a lot of things in the text okay I just wanted to show you, try to get out um, my first thoughts about the reference Bible. I'm like, I, I noticed I went down through it, and I'm like, all it says is it's omitted from the text, but um, I never heard of it. <laughs> you know, how are people going to know that it is part of the text or not? You know, they're doing the same exact thing as modern versions. Well, this, this is omitted from the text. I mean, this is omitted our best manuscripts, so it must not belong. They only give uh, bring you up to uh, that far and tell you, well, the, there's other evidence that's actually belongs. It might mislead people. So, um, I mean, it is true. Just believe that it is true that it's missing from the manuscript, but it do, does belong in the text. So I just wanted to share you share with you some of my uh, first thoughts, first things I noticed about the the Bible so far. I mean, um, so so I hope this helps you. Thank you and take care.